Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 1st of October 2024. The batch 2 of prelims pre stromic test series is going to start on 5th October 2024. Interested aspirants can use it. The link for this test series is given in the description below. In this video, we are going to discuss three important articles. The first article is about one horn rhinoceros. The second article is about Asian elephants. The third article is about new science awards. So we are going to discuss these three articles in prelims exam perspective. Now let us get into the discussion. Now look at the first article. It is about the new science awards, Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar. In 2023, the government replaced numerous science awards with the Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar. The government said this is to improve the transparency of the awards. However, there were controversy when the inaugural list of awardees were altered after the submission. So this raises concerns of ministerial interference into the awards and many procedural changes in listing the awards. So in this context, let us discuss about the Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar in prelims exam perspective. The Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar RVP stands as a one of the highest recognition in the field of science and technology and innovation. So it was introduced in 2024 and the objective was to acknowledge and inspire the remarkable contribution of scientists, technologists and innovators in the field of science and technology. So the RVP awards honors those who have made path breaking discoveries and advancement. So the RVP awards honors those who have made path breaking discoveries and advancement that significantly contributed to Indian society and also to the global scientific community. The award will be announced annually on May 11th that is the National Technology Day and there will be ceremony for all the categories which will take place on National Space Day. So the important thing to note that the award will be announced on May 11th which is National Technology Day and the award will be given on National Space Day. The Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar Awards were given in six domains. Physical Sciences, Chemical Sciences, Biological Sciences, Mathematical Sciences, Earth and Atmospheric Sciences and Engineering Sciences. So these are the six domains in which the Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar is given. Now let us see about the categories of Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar. There are totally four categories. Let us see them one by one. The first one is Vigyan Ratna. This award honors lifetime achievement and major contribution in science and technology and it is given up to three winners each year. So this is the Vigyan Ratna. The eligibility criteria for Vigyan Ratna is any distinguished scientist and technologist with a career of significant achievement. The 2024 award for Vigyan Ratna is given to G. Padmanabhan for his lifetime achievements in biological sciences. He had made huge contributions regarding malaria parasites. So this is about Vigyan Ratna. Now another category of award is Vigyan Sri Award. This award recognizes outstanding contributions in any field of science and technology with up to 25 winners each year. So the eligibility criteria is the individuals with the notable achievements in their respective technological or scientific domains. So the main difference between Vigyan Sri and Vigyan Ratna is Vigyan Ratna is given only up to 3 winners per year while Vigyan Sri is given up to 25 winners each year. The third category of award is Vigyan Yuva Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award. So this award is given to up to 25 winners each year. It recognizes and encourages the young scientist under 45 years of age to have made exceptional contributions in the field of science and technology. So this is particularly given to young scientists who demonstrated exceptional research or innovation. The 2024 award for Vigyan team was given to Chandrayan 3 team. So these are the four categories of Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar awards. Now what are the benefits of these awards? Each recipient is given a sanad or certificate which is signed by President of India. A brochure with a citation and photograph of awardees is released on the ceremony day that is on National Space Day. The decorations are given to the next of kin in case of posthumous award. So it, these awards can be given posthumously also. So this is about Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar awards. Now let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Consider the following statements regarding Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar. In 2022, the government replaced numerous science awards with the Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar to improve transparency. This statement is obviously incorrect. As we have seen in the discussion, the Rashtriya Vigyan Purushkar awards was constituted only in 2024. So this is an incorrect statement. Vigyan Yuva Shakti Swarup Bhatnagar Awards recognizes and encourages young scientists under 25 years of age. This statement is also incorrect because it recognizes scientists under 45 years of age. Now look at the third statement. Vigyan Ratna honors lifetime achievements and major contributions in science and technology with up to three winners each year. This statement is correct. We have seen in this discussion, Vigyan Ratna honors only up to three winners per year. So the correct answer for this question is option 1 and 2 only, option C. 
because the question have asked about what are the incorrect statements. With this, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at the news. The one on rhinoceros grazing in the Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary in Morigan district of Assam. The one on rhinoceros, which is also known as the greater one on rhino, is one of the five species of rhinos and it is primarily found in India and Nepal. So in this context, let us discuss the basics of one on rhino for our prelims exam. Regarding the habitat, these rhinos inhabit the grasslands and wetlands of Terai and Brahmaputra Basin. As of 2022, the population is estimated to be 4000 with almost 2600 rhinoceros present in Kasiranga National Park alone. So more than half of the rhinoceros are present in Kasiranga National Park. Regarding the conservation status, these one on rhinos are listed as vulnerable in IUCN red list. They face threats due to poaching and habitat destruction. They have single black horn made of keratin which can grow of up to 25 inches and they can weigh up to 1800 to 2700 kg. So this is about their physical trait. Now look at the conservation efforts. Under project Rhino and Indian Rhino Vision of 2022, there were serious efforts to protect and conserve the rhino species. So this has led to significant population recovery of unknown rhinoceros in and around Assam. Now let us see some points related to Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary which is mentioned in the news. This Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary is situated in Morigan district of Assam and it lies about 50 km from Gauhati. It covers about 38.8 square kilometers and only 16 square kilometers are the core rhino habitat. So this wildlife sanctuary has a core rhino habitat. The Pobitora has one of the largest rhino density in the world and it has around 102 rhinos in 2023. Pobitora is also home to variety of species including wild boar, barking deer and more than 200 species of birds. So the sanctuary is a key tourist attraction in Assam and it plays a crucial role in spreading awareness about the rhino conservation. In addition to Kasiranga National Park, Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary is also an important protection area for rhinos. With this, let us conclude the discussion. Let us discuss a MCQ related to this topic. Which of the following national parks in India is known for highest population of Indian one-horned rhinoceros? As we have seen in the discussion, the correct answer for this is option A, Kasiranga National Park. Out of all one horned rhinoceros, more than half of them are present in Kasiranga National Park. So it has the highest density of one horned rhinoceros in the world. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now look at this article, it talks about the Asian elephants and their genetic diversity. The article highlights a study on Indian elephants which focus on the loss of genetic diversity as they migrated from north to south. So this migration has led to formation of five genetically distinct population of Asian elephants. So this is what given in the news. In this context, let us discuss about the basics of Asian elephants. The scientific name for Asian elephant is Elephas maximus and they are commonly called as Asiatic elephants or Indian elephants. In IUCN red list, they are listed as endangered species. And in sites index, they are listed in appendix 1. In India, they are listed under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 which provides highest level of protection to them. And they are also protected under Project Elephant, which was introduced in 1992. And this is regarding the conservation efforts of Indian elephants. Now looking at their physical features, they weigh up to 3000 to 6000 kilograms. That is up to 3 tons to 6 tons. And the male elephants have height of up to 9 feet and the female elephants have height of up to 7.9 feet. That is the female elephants are shorter than male elephants. Their average lifespan is 48 years. So regarding the tusk, the male have larger tusk and female generally have no tusk or shorter tusk. So this is regarding the physical features of Asiatic elephants. There is an another species of elephant called African elephants which are only found in Africa and these African elephants are larger compared to Asiatic elephants and the African elephants are listed as vulnerable in IUCN red list. If you look at the social structure of elephants, elephants live in a matriarchal herds. That means they are led by the oldest female member of the herd. The males generally live in solitary but may form loose association with other males. Regarding communication, the elephant use vocalizations, body language and tactile interactions for the communication. Regarding the gestation period, they are the longest of all mammals. They have the gestation period of up to 18 to 22 months. Now let us see the subspecies of Asiatic elephants. There are three primary subspecies. The one is Indian elephant. Another one is Sri Lankan elephant and then Sumatran elephants. The Indian elephants are primarily found in India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh. The Sri Lankan elephant is native to Sri Lanka. The Sumatran elephants are found in Sumatra Islands in Indonesia. So the Sumatran elephant, the smallest of the three subspecies of Asiatic elephants. 
there are two minor subspecies of asiatic elephants one is borneo elephant and malaysian elephant the borneo elephants are found in borneo islands of indonesia and malaysian elephants are found in malaysia so these are the five subspecies of asiatic elephants as i have said earlier there is an another kind of species of elephant called african elephants which are found only in africa regarding the habitat and distribution they are found in 13 countries across indian subcontinent and southeast asia the asiatic elephants are widely spread across india sri lanka nepal bhutan myanmar thailand and indonesia their habitats range from tropical forest and deciduous forest and they are also found in grassland and wetlands the largest population is found in the southern india particularly in karnataka kerala and tamil nadu so these three states have largest population of asian elephants if you particularly look at the elephant population in India, according to the elephant census conducted in 2017, there were totally 29,964 elephants, that is approximately 30,000 elephants in India, according to the elephant census. Out of these 30,000 elephants, the highest population was found in Karnataka. The next highest population is in Assam and it is followed by Kerala. So, Karnataka, Assam, Kerala are the top three states in elephant population in India. Regarding the conservation status, as I have said earlier, they are listed under endangered species in IUCN red list. Over 50% of elephant population have declined in the past three generations. That is 50% of population has declined in the last 75 years. To conserve their population, Indian government has announced Project Elephant in 1992. This Project Elephant focuses on the habitat conservation, reducing elephant-human conflict and protecting the elephants from poaching. Under this Project Elephant, there were 32 elephant reserves across India. Apart from Project Elephant, Indian government has also created elephant corridors. So, there are 101 identified elephant corridors across India and these elephant corridors are created to allow the safe movement of elephant between their habitats to prevent the human-elephant conflict. So, elephant corridors are like their pathway to elephant to migrate from one habitat to another. So, these corridors are critical in mitigating the effects of habitat fragmentation. So, this is about the Asiatic elephants. In this context, let us discuss an MCQ question. Now, look at the MCQ. With reference to Indian elephants, consider the following statements. Look at the first statement. The leader of an elephant group is a female. Yes, this statement is correct. As we have seen in the discussion, elephants are in the groups of matriarchal herds. Now, look at the second statement. The maximum gestation period can be 22 months. The statement is also correct. An elephant can normally go on coughing till the age of 40 years only. This statement is incorrect. Among the states in India, the highest elephant population is in Kerala. This statement is also incorrect. We have seen in the discussion, the highest population is in Karnataka, which is followed by Assam and then Kerala. So, the correct answer for this question is option A, 1 and 2 only. With this, let us conclude the discussion. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.